What is up YouTube? I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking where we cover all things Swift and Swift UI related. And if you're just joining, I want to welcome you to this advanced Swift UI series. And in this video, we are going to learn how to build a totally 100% custom tab bar in Swift UI. And if you've been following my courses, you may have realized that I don't very often create custom components. And that's because when you're learning, I think it's really crucially important to focus your time on code that you're gonna actually use and reuse in all of your apps. So things like networking, you're always going to use. But things like creating custom views is much more rare because you might create a view that you use in one app, but you might never use it in another app. So I don't like to create custom views. However, I think the vast majority of apps use either a tab bar or a navigation view. And those two components in SwiftUI are not that customizable. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to customize a tab view, and in the next video, we're gonna customize a navigation view. Now, as we get into it, and as you're gonna see, I'm gonna actually model our custom tab view based off of Apple's API for the default tab view. We're gonna to try to make our version as close to Apple's version as possible. This way it will be easy to use and share with other developers. All right, welcome back everyone. I'm back in our Xcode project and there's gonna be a couple files that we need to create for this video. So let's actually create a folder in the nav bar here. So let's right click the navigator, create a new group and let's call this custom tab bar. I'm gonna move it then down just below the other folder and in this custom tab bar, let's right click, create a new file, and it's gonna be a Swift UI view. Let's call this app tab bar view. Click create. So when the app opens, this will be like the first screen. So before we create our own version, let's actually just create the existing tab bar that comes with Swift UI. So we could do a tab view here, open and open the parentheses. We have selection and content. And then the selection here. Up at the top here, let's create an at state private var. We'll say selection and it will be of type string. We'll set it equal to just maybe home for now. And we're gonna bind to that selection with the money sign selection. And I'm going to actually just delete this content, close the parentheses and open the brackets here. And then in this tab view, we are going to have a couple different screens. We're gonna have color.red, let's do color.blue and color.orange. Click resume, we should have three tabs here now. And each of these tabs needs a dot tab item. So in here we can do an image with a system with a system name. I can do house. Let's do a text that says maybe home. I'm gonna copy and paste this tab item two more times. The second one, let's do maybe heart, and this will be favorites. The third one, let's do person, and this will be profile. All right, if I click play on the simulator here, we can see our tab bar at the bottom. We have our red screen here, which is the first screen. The second one should be blue, third one should be orange. So we can click through our tabs here. I've done this in other videos and boot camps, but what we're doing in this video is customizing our own version of this. So we wanna create a custom tab view that has a closure and in that closure we can add in all of our screens and then each of those screens we can add a tab item to and then that tab item will come up on this tab bar here. So there are three parts to creating this tab view. The first thing we're gonna do is create this section down here, the actual tab bar. The second thing we need to do is create a container like this that hosts the tab view as well as all of the content, all of the screens inside of it. So all of these screens we need to then add. And the third thing is actually this tab item here. So this tab item is a child view of the tab view. Although when we set it, it's customizing the parent level tab bar at the bottom. So this is actually going to be updating using a preference key, which we learned in the last video. So in this video to create this custom tab bar, we are going to use generics. We're going to use view builder. We're going to use the preference key, and we're even going to use the matched geometry effect. So all four of these videos I've covered in this series, and I would say they're all prerequisites to watching this video. So if you haven't watched any of those four videos, 
go watch those and then come on back and this will make a lot more sense to you. But as I said, this video has three parts. The first part is the tab bar at the bottom. So let's first create this tab bar. I'm going to right click the navigator, create a new file. It will be a Swift UI view and let's call this custom tab bar view. Go ahead and click create. Let's click resume once you're inside. Let's start by creating just a single tab. So if we look at the actual tab bar, we're just going to create one of these right now on the left here. So I'm going to jump in here. Let's create a let's create a V stack. Open the brackets. Let's do an image with a system name. And let's just put home for a second. And then below it, we're going to put a text that says home. Sorry, this should be house. Let's give this a font of subheadline and let's give this a font of system with a size, weight, and design. Size 10, weight, semi bold, design, let's do rounded. And on this V stack, let's add a foreground color. Let's do color.red for a second. We're going to add some padding of maybe vertical to maybe dot eight. Let's give it a frame with a max width of infinity, a background, let's do color.red.opacity maybe 0.2, and let's give it a corner radius of 10. So this, is just, so this is what one of our tabs is going to look like. And of course, we're gonna change up the actual image, the text, and the color that is going into this tab. So I'm going to cut this V stack. Down here, let's create an extension for custom tab bar view. Open the brackets and let's create a private func. Let's call it tab view. Open those parentheses, have it return some view. Open the brackets and we're gonna paste our tab inside. And then when we create this tab, we wanna customize what we're passing in here. So the, so the image and the text. So I'm gonna create a model for that. So down here, let's create a struct Let's call it tab bar item. Let's make it conform to hashable so that we can use it in a for each loop. We'll open the brackets. And every tab bar item is gonna have let icon name of type string. It's gonna have let title of type string. And it's gonna have let color of type color. So when we create a custom tab view, we're gonna pass in a tab of type tab bar item. The system name will then be the tab dot icon name. The text will be tab dot title. The color will be tab dot color. And the background color will also be tab dot color dot opacity 0.2. All right, let's scroll up here and fix some of these errors. And let's initialize this view with some tabs. So up here, we'll say let tabs of type array of tab bar item. And then in the, in the actual view, we're gonna create an H stack and we're gonna loop on the tab. So we'll say for each, open parentheses. We use the ID and content here. So we're gonna do for each tabs, backslash dot self for the ID. And remember, we can use this hashable ID because we made tab bar item hashable. Click enter on the content, this will be for each tab. And then in here, we're gonna add a tab view and we'll pass in the tab. All right, now, now on our preview, let's just add some fake tabs for a second. So we're gonna add in a static let tabs of type array of tab bar item, set it equal to, let's put in some fake tabs here. So we'll do tab bar item, open the parentheses. Let's do house, this one will say home. We'll make it color.red. And let's do maybe two more. So we'll do tab bar item. This one, let's do heart. We'll have it say favorites. We'll do color.blue. And then one more, let's do tab bar item. Icon name, let's do person. This one will say profile. And we'll make it color.green. In this preview here, let's initialize it with the tabs. Click resume. We should now see our tab bar with three tabs on it. It's looking pretty good. Let's make it resemble an actual tab bar quickly by, I'm gonna put this into a V stack here and put a spacer above it to push it down to the bottom. All right, and on the background of this H stack, let's add a background color. We'll do color 
dot, let's do blue for a second just so we can really see it in our preview. All right, let's add some padding before the background, maybe padding of maybe six. And we want the background of our tab view to extend to the bottom past the actual safe area. Because if this is actually our tab bar and we have a background, we don't want the screen to show up behind the tab bar down here. We want the tab bar to extend to the bottom, maybe with some white space down here. So on this color dot blue, let's actually make it dot ignores safe area. And we're gonna use the edges of bottom. So we ignore the bottom here. I'm gonna put this back on one line. And let's make it color.white because we don't actually want a blue background. Now we have a white background for our app here. And then when we click on these tabs, we want to animate which one is selected. So up at the top here, let's create an at state var. Let's call it selection of type tab bar item. For right now, let's just set it equal to, let's copy this first tab bar item here and just paste it up here just for a second. So we have our selection, let's click resume. And then in this tab view, let's just customize it depending on if it is selected. So I'll jump down to the definition of the tab view and we're gonna say if selection is equal to the tab, question mark, let's do tab.color. Otherwise, let's just do color.gray. All right, and then similarly, down here for the background, let's do if selection is equal to tab, question mark, tab.color.opacity 0.2, otherwise let's do color.clear. All right, so now in our preview, we have only home is selected and it's red. And now when we click on these other ones, we need to update which one is selected. So let's create a private funk, let's say switch to tab pass in the tab of type tab bar item and open the brackets. And with animation of dot ease in out, we're gonna open the brackets and we will set the selection equal to the new tab. And then finally back up in our code here on this tab view, let's add an on tap gesture and we'll switch to tab with the tab that we are clicking on. So now if I click resume on the canvas here, I can then click and it will animate between these tabs. And the last thing I wanna do before we move off this screen is actually make this selection binding to the rest of our app. Because we're, we're gonna to wanna to connect this to a higher level selection so that when the actual screen changes, this changes as well. It doesn't just start and end inside this custom tab bar view. So we're gonna make this at binding var selection of type tab bar item. We don't need to initialize it because we're gonna pass it into the initializer. Let's update our initializer down here. So it says fix, and let's just set it equal to dot constant, uh, and let's just do tabs dot first. And I'll use the exclamation point here just to force unwrap it. I know that there is a first within this tabs because we have it right here, um, but I would not use this. I would not use this force unwrap if this was actually code in my production app. But now we have the first part of our tab view complete. All right, so if I go back to our tab, app tab bar view, and I look at this again, the first step is to set up this bottom tab bar. So we have this bottom tab bar here. The second step is going to be creating a container view that will hold all of the screens as well as the tab bar. Because when we create this tab view, inside this tab view is this bottom bar, but it also gives us this closure, which is a view builder, where we can add in all of the views within the tab view. So now we're gonna create this, basically this closure here and this container view. So I'm gonna right click the navigator, create a new file, Swift UI view. Let's call this custom tab bar container view. And let's click create. Click resume when you're inside. Let's get this set up here and to actually build this container view, we're gonna start by looking at the actual documentation for the regular tab view. So if I jump back to this tab view and I right click on it and it jumped to the definition, this is Apple's documentation for their default tab view. We can see that they set up this, the tab view is a struct that has some generic data here and it conforms to view. 
And the generic data has a selection value where the selection value conforms to hashable. And it has generic content where the content conforms to view. And we also can see the public init down here. So when we call tab view and we open the parentheses, we actually are getting this initializer. It has a selection and it has a view builder. And inside that view builder, we can add in all of the content, all of the screens in our app. So this is what we've been using every time we call tab view in our app. So I'm gonna start by actually copying this struct line of code right here. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna jump back into our code. And go to the tab bar container view. And I'm going to just paste this up here and open the brackets for a second. I'm going to make this bigger. We don't need the preview for a second. Let's call this tab bar, let's call this tab view two. And I just want to point out before we move on that this with this where statement is another way of declaring generic data. So this selection value is hashable. And another way of writing this line will be what we have been doing in our app in the last couple of videos. Let's create a struct called tab view three. Let's give it a generic selection value where that selection value conforms to hashable. Let's also add content where that content conforms to view. And let's make the tab view three conform to view. So this is how I've been doing it in my code and writing it like this is essentially the same thing as writing it like this. These two lines of code are the same. This is just another way of declaring your code. So up here, selection value where selection value is hashable. Here we just have selection value that conforms to hashable, same thing. And before we move on, I wanna point out that Apple's API of the tab view has selection value conformed to hashable. It is using this generic hashable so that the tab view can be generic for whatever you wanna use as the selection content. Anything that is hashable, so it's a string, if it's an integer, what anything that is hashable could be the selection value. And that's great, but we're building a very custom tab bar and we actually don't need our selection value to be as generic as this. Instead, we know our selection value is always going to be a tab bar item. If I jump back to ta custom tab bar view and I go to the definition of our tab bar item, we can see that this is already conforming to hashable. So I can just pass in a custom tab bar item. I don't actually need that generic hashable constraint. So if I go back, we're actually not going to have this generic constraint here, but we are going to have custom content. So my custom tab bar container view, we're not gonna need a generic selection, but we will need a generic view. So I'm gonna copy that and let's initialize it with a generic view here. And in here, let's say let content of type content. And one more time, I'm gonna jump to the actual docs. So let's go back to the app tab bar view. I'm gonna right click, jump to the definition of tab view. And I want my tab view to, to basically work as close as possible to the actual tab view that Apple gives us. And that means this is what our knit looks like. So I'm gonna copy this init here, and I'm gonna go back into our code. Let's go to the custom tab bar container view, and let's paste in this init, and we'll open the brackets. So this init is what you get every time you call tab bar view and you open the parentheses, you're getting a selection and then content. And we're gonna do the same thing, except we don't need this generic selection. We know our selection is actually going to be a tab bar item. And we're always gonna have a selection, so we don't need to make it optional. So in our code here, let's create an app binding var. Let's call it selection of type tab bar item. And then in our initializer, we'll set self dot underscore selection. And we use the underscore because we're referencing the binding, the actual wrapped value of this selection. We'll set it equal to selection. And we'll set self.content equal to content. And we need to open and close the parentheses here because this content is actually a function that returns content. So we need to call the function to set up this content. All right, we don't need these at the top here. I was just show showing you where we are getting our initializer from and how we're just copying the Apple documentation. So I'm gonna delete these at the top. And now very simply, let's design our actual tab bar container view. And our tab bar container view is going to have a V stack. And this V stack will have spacing of a zero. And in it, we're gonna have a Z stack that holds all of our screens. So this will be 
the content will be inside here. So the content will be inside here. And below the VStack is going to be our custom tab bar view. Open the parentheses. We have to pass in our tabs as well as the selection. Now we know the selection up here is, we already have that, so let's do a money sign selection. And then we just need these tabs. So on this container view, let's create an at state private var. Let's call it tabs of type array of tab bar item. We'll set it equal to a blank array for now. So we're just gonna start with no tabs in this tab array, but we're gonna pass in this value to our custom tab bar view here. Let's then update our initializer down here. We have our tab bar container view, open the parentheses. We have selection and content. So I'm going to so I'm going to jump back to our custom tab bar view and I'm going to get our static tabs here from the preview on this screen. I'm going to copy them and just paste them onto the preview of this screen. And our selection for right now let's just do dot constant and let's do tabs dot first with the exclamation point force unwrap it. And for the content let's press enter. And let's just do color dot red for the first screen in our code. Let's open up the canvas again and see if this is working. We should now see the red screen with a tab bar at the bottom. So now we have our custom container view, but we can't actually see that tab bar because we don't have any tabs in our tab bar right now. We initialized it with a blank array. So for one second, let's just copy these preview tabs here. And if we just paste them up here, we should see and click resume, we should see these tabs all right, so we can see how this is going to look in an actual app. We have our screen here, and then we have these tabs. All right, we're done with this preview, so I'm going to just press Command Z to undo and initialize this with a blank array here. And you're probably wondering why I'm initializing this with a blank array. Well, we could initialize this tab bar container view with actual tabs. We could pass them into our knit like we do here. We could pass in like an array of tabs, and we could get those easily. But what I'm trying to do is make this custom tab bar work as similar as possible to the actual tab bar API that Apple gives us. So if we look at the actual app tab bar view here, this is the default one. We create a tab view with selection, but when we create this tab view, we don't actually set up the tabs until we add these tab items. So these tab items are coming from child views and they're being set to update the actual tab bar. And I want to kind of replicate this in our tab bar as well. So that's what we're going to do now. So the first step was creating this bottom bar. The second step was creating the container. And the third step is actually updating these tab items dynamically from the child view, which actually uses a preference key. So let's start by actually just taking this tab view and making it a sub view. So I'm going to create an extension here. Let's call it app tab bar view create a private var, let's just call it default tab view of type some view, open brackets. I'm gonna cut this tab view and just paste it down here. So now we could have our default tab view on the screen and it works, but instead of a default tab view for a second, let's actually put in our custom tab bar container view. And we open the parentheses and we get the selection and content and the selection and content looks a lot like the initializer for this tab view. We have selection and then we have content. So the selection, we need a binding tab bar item. So let's create an at state private var. Let's call it a tab selection, just so it's a different name of type tab bar item. And let's just set it equal to a default value. So I'm gonna go back to the custom tab bar view here. I'm gonna copy and I'm going to copy these template tabs again and come back to our app tab bar preview here. Let's just paste those into the preview down here. I'm going to copy this first house here, this first tab bar item, and let's just set that as the selection at the start. So in here, we're going to bind to the money sign tab selection. And for the content, we will press enter. And then in here, we're going to put color.blue. We should now see a blue screen. And this custom tab bar container view right now with a selection and the closure is looking identical to this tab bar view, this tab view that has selection and a closure. 
and then we have our screens in here and now we need to just add dot tab item but we're gonna obviously customize it so it's actually our dot tab bar item so what we're gonna do is actually create a custom preference key so let's right click the navigator create a new file this will be a Swift file because we don't need the Swift UI preview. So let's just do a Swift file here. Click next. And let's call this tab bar items preference key. Click create. In here, we're going to import Swift UI. Let's create a struct that's called tab bar items items preference key make it conform to a preference key open the brackets and as you guys learned in the last video every preference key needs a default value and the value of our preference key is going to be an array of tab bar item we're gonna default initialize it with a blank array and then we need our reduce function and here we're gonna take our tab bar items and every time we add another tab bar item we're going to append to the current array so very simply, we're gonna do value plus equals the next value, open close parentheses. We need open close parentheses here because this is a function that returns tab bar item. So every time we add a tab bar item to the preference key, instead of changing the preference key, we're actually just going to append to the preference key so that this array keeps growing. I'm then gonna create a custom view modifier to update this preference key. So down here, let's create a struct Let's call it tab bar item view modifier. And it will be of type view modifier. Open the brackets. Every view modifier needs a body. And we're going to return the content as is with dot preference with a key and a value. And the key, of course, will be our tab items preference key dot self and then a value. So when we create this view modifier, we're going to pass it in with a tab. So we'll say let tab of type tab bar item. We'll pass in that tab here. Now the value of our preference key is actually an array of tab bar item. So in here, I can't just put the tab. I need to put an array with the tab inside. Finally, let's create an extension of view to call this modifier. So we're gonna create an extension down here. So we're gonna create an extension down here that will be a view and we're going to create a funk we'll call it uh, tab bar item we'll pass in the tab of type tab bar item and this will return some view open the brackets and we're going to return self the actual view itself with a modifier and the modifier will be our tab bar item view modifier We'll pass in our tab from here down to here. And now we can call tab bar item directly onto our view. When we call it, we can add in a tab and then those tabs go into the view modifier, which will then call the preference key and update our preference key. Every time we add these tabs, we're actually gonna append them to each other. So eventually we're just gonna have a big array of tab bar items. So going back to our app tab bar view here, Let's click resume. On this first screen, let's just add a dot tab bar item. And here we need to pass in a tab. So I'm going to copy this first tab here and paste that in as the tab. Let's do another one with color dot red. I'm gonna add a tab bar item. Let's copy the second tab bar item here, paste that in. And then third, we're gonna do color.green, tab bar item. And let's copy the third tab here and paste it in. All right, so we now have a similar setup to the actual tab view, right? So we have our tab view, we have our screen, and then we add a tab item. And similarly up here, we have our tab view, we have our screen, and then we have our item. The only thing is that these items are not actually showing on the screen yet. So what we're gonna do is jump into the tab bar container view. And if you remember, we set this up with a blank array of tabs here. And we did that because what we're gonna actually do is watch that preference key that we just set up. So on this VStack, we're gonna call dot on preference change. And we're gonna use the one with a key. 
And the preference key, of course, will be our tab bar items, preference key dot self. And when this changes, we're gonna set self dot tabs equal to that new value. So every time this changes, we're appending to that tab bar preference key and then we're gonna update this array and then we're gonna update this array with all of our tabs. So if I jump back to our app tab bar view and I click resume, we should now see those tabs actually jump onto the screen here. All right, and when I click through them, we can then select the different tabs and this is working perfectly. The only thing we have left here is actually changing the screen when we click on these tabs. Because you can see right now we're animating the tab bar, but we're not actually animating, but we're not actually changing the screen that we're on. And we should be seeing color.blue and dot red, not just the green one. So we need an indicator for this tab bar item to tell when this tab bar item is actually selected. So I'm gonna jump to this tab bar item definition. And let's see where we're actually coming from. We're gonna look in this view modifier, and in this view modifier, let's add an at binding. We'll call it var, we'll say selection, and it will be of type tab bar item. And if that tab is currently selected, we will change its opacity. So here we'll say dot opacity. If selection is equal to the tab, question mark, 1.0, otherwise 0.0. .0. Now when we initialize this view modifier, we need to bind it to a selection. So down here, we have to fix this. And we need to pass in the selection to our function here. So here we're gonna say selection of type binding tab bar item. We'll pass in our selection. And while we're here, we actually don't need this self dot. We can just call dot modifier here. And now let's just update the tab bar item calls in our actual code. So if I go back to the app tab bar view, click resume, we should get some errors here. Let's just fix these by binding to the actual selected state. So here we'll do money sign tab selection, money sign tab selection, money sign tab selection. Let's click try again one more time and when we click through our tabs now we should actually change the screen. This is looking awesome. Now this video is getting long but I do want to customize this a little bit more just to show you guys how much better we can make our code. So the first thing that comes to my mind is that when we create these tab bar items this is very annoying to have to create this tab bar item every time, right? We've been copying and pasting these template tab bar items all around our app. So let's start by jumping to the definition of tab bar item. And I'm gonna actually cut this struct and let's create a new file. So let's right click, create a new file, be a Swift file and let's call this tab bar item. Click create and we'll paste in our struct. Let's also import Swift UI here. All right, so right now we're using these custom tab bar items and this is a custom model. I've made a bunch of models in my videos and these models are really handy when you don't know the actual data that you're gonna get. So in your app, if you have like a bunch of user profiles or posts that you're downloading from the internet, these models come in handy because you can download all those posts and then set up what those posts should look like. Uh, but when we're talking about the tab bar specifically, we actually have all of that data in our code already, right? We know all of the tabs that are gonna be in this app. We don't actually need to download them from anywhere. So because we have all of the data already, it will actually be easier to make this tab bar item an enum instead of a struct. So what we're gonna do is actually create an enum called tab bar item. And we'll make the enum conform to hashable, open the brackets. And in here will be all the cases for all of our tab bars. So we're gonna have case and let's jump back to our preview and I'm just gonna copy these tabs here, jump to our tab bar item. And let's just put a case for all of these. So we're gonna say case home, we have case favorites and case profile. And then inside this enum, we're gonna create a variable for icon name and title and color. So here we'll say far icon name of type string. We'll switch on self. And for dot home, we will return the icon name house to case dot favorites, and we will return uh, the heart, and then case 
dot person, let's return a person. We don't need the default case here. Let's copy and paste this down here. The second one, let's call it title. And we're gonna copy this. Well, this one will say home. This one will say favorites. This one will say profile. Let's copy and paste one more variable. Let's call this one color. This will be of type color. And let's return color.red. Let's return color.blue. And let's return color.green. All right, so, so again, normally we can make these custom models when we need to really customize what the data is. But because we have all of this data up front, it's actually easier to just reference an enum here. So I'm gonna delete this at the bottom and I'm going to actually comment out this tab bar item up here. And we're gonna use this tab bar item instead. If I try to run this, we should get some crashes because we need to update our tab bar item now. So let's jump through these. Let's go jump into the app tab bar view. All right. So in our app tab bar view, the tab selection Let's set it equal to dot home to start. And again, this is why these enums are so handy because instead of typing all this out, we can just reference one of the enum cases. So this first dot tab bar, we're gonna call dot tab bar item. Let's call dot home and then we'll bind to the tab selection. So you can see here how nicer and cleaner this bit of code is than what we had before. So we're gonna copy and paste this. This will be the dot favorites tab. And then down here, we're gonna do one more. Let's do tab bar item. Let's do dot, this will be the profile screen and bind to the tab selection. All right, we don't need these tabs here, so I'm gonna delete these. And again, you can see just how nice and neat our code is when we use this enum. I love it. This is super readable code here. And let's jump to the other errors quickly. Custom tab bar view. This static array of tabs we can change out instead of actually typing these in. Let's just do dot home, dot favorites, dot profile. Let's jump into the custom tab bar container view. We need to update this as well. And let's just add in our dot home, dot favorites, dot profile. Again, you can see how easy this enum is. Let's jump back to the app tab bar view, click try again. And hopefully our tab bar is now working. So we can click through here. And this is looking great. Now we're gonna do a couple more customizations before we wrap up this video because I really wanna get you guys comfortable with what we did here, right? So we created this container view. We are having our different screens in this container view and then we made them tab bar items and this again is working just like the app the actual tab view from from apple we have a tab view where we bind to a selection inside that closure that view builder we have all of our screens and then we have our dot tab item now our tab item doesn't look exactly like this it looks a little bit different but i think for our purposes you know the functionality of it is exactly the same all right, so let's customize this bottom tab bar a little bit just to make it look a little bit better. So let's go into that tab bar here. So let's jump into the custom tab bar view. So I'm going to cut this. Let's come down to our underneath our tab view. Let's create private var. Let's call it um, tab bar version one of type some view, open brackets, paste in that tab bar and we can put in our tab bar version one up here click resume it should look exactly as is and now we're going to create a version two of this so the second version is going to have slightly different code so i'm going to copy this tab view i'm going to come down here let's create another extension just to separate the code a little bit let's call it custom tab bar view open brackets let's paste in our tab view function let's call this tab view two it's gonna look very similar, except instead of this background just animating when we click on it, we're gonna make this background animate with a match geometry effect. So on this background, let's delete this, make it multiple lines, let's add a Z stack onto the background here. And we're gonna say if selection is equal to the tab, open brackets, 
And if it is equal to the tab, let's add a rounded rectangle behind it. We'll do a corner radius of 10 and we'll fill it with the tab.color.opacity of 0.2. All right, let's click resume. All right, and then let's create a new version of our tab bar. So I'm gonna copy this tab bar version one, let's paste it down here. Let's call this tab bar version two. All right, I want the version two to look like it's kind of floating on top of our screen here. So on this background of the tab bar, let's add a corner radius of maybe 10. Let's add some shadow. Let's use the color completion here. We'll do color.black dot opacity of 0 0.3 let's give it a radius of 10 and x of 0 and a y of maybe 5 and then let's add a little bit more padding let's do maybe dot horizontal just to push it in a little bit let's put tab bar version 2 on the screen put version 2 here click resume see what it looks like quickly all right so now we can get this kind of floating tab bar effect on top of our screen so let's jump to our app tab bar view and see what we have so far. So I have our tabs and when we click through here, it's changing the screen, but I wanna make this rectangle actually animate between each of these tabs. And it's just showing up right now. It's not animating or sliding from tab to tab. So what we're gonna do is jump, to our, jump back in to our custom tab bar view. And on this rounded rectangle in the background, let's add a matched geometry effect. The ID, let's just call it background underscore rectangle. You can call it whatever ID you want. Then we need to add it to a namespace. So let's jump, so let's scroll back up. And on this whole custom tab bar view, we're gonna create an at namespace. Let's call it make it private var. And we're just gonna call it namespace because there's only one. So we could just use that word nice and easy. And now we'll just add in our namespace down here. So we're using a match geometry effect to animate between the different rectangles that we're drawing on the screen. All right, and, and the last thing we need to do, I forgot to do in the tab bar version two, we actually want the tab view to be our tab view two. So let's put the tab view two onto the screen. And then finally, because we have the corner radius on the rounded rectangle, we actually don't need the corner radius on the entire V stack here. So let's just cut that. And let's jump in to our app tab bar view, click resume and see what we got here. So now if I anim click through these, we should actually animate the match geometry effect between the tabs. And I'm gonna take this app tab bar view, copy it and jump into our, our app.swift file, paste in that app tab bar view and click play to actually build this to a simulator. We should get our tab bar view actually looking pretty good here. So we can click it and we get this really cool animation between these tabs, right? We got uh, the home screen, the favorite screen, it's changing colors and it's sliding between tabs, which is really, really cool. The last thing I want to do before we finish this is actually make these screens full screen because now that our tab bar is not actually going to the bottom of the screen here, I want to get rid of some of this white space down here. So how do we do that? We can actually just customize our container view. So I'm going to jump into our tab bar container view here. Let's click resume. And what I'm going to do is just reconfigure this screen quickly from a V stack to a Z stack. Open brackets. I'm just going to put the content inside and then put the tab bar view on top. I'm going to delete this actual first V stack and then let's just make the alignment of bottom. So now we have our tab bar will be at the bottom here once we initialize it with the actual tabs. And then the last thing I wanna do is set the content to ignore the safe area. All right, so if I jump back to my app tab bar view, we can now get the full screen. We can now see that the screen behind it is full screen and we have our tabs on top. I'll build and run that to the simulator one more time just so we can check it. Which is looking great. And the last and final thing I want to do here that I just noticed is that we're animating the tab bar, but we're also animating switching between the screens. And it looks pretty good right now, but if we look at the actual tab bar API, when you click a different tab, it jumps to that next screen. It's not animating to that second screen. So we might want this animation, but we might not. 
So let's get rid of the animation between the actual tabs. So I'm going to jump to where that animation is coming from in our tab bar view here. It's coming from our switch to tab function. So what I'm going to do is basically just take out the animation here and we're just going to switch to tab without animation. And so if I build and run this, we can then switch to tabs without animation. But we still want the animation on the tab bar, right? We still want that match geometry effect. So in this custom tab bar view, let's initialize it with an at state var. Let's call this uh, local selection of type tab bar item. So when we initialize this custom tab bar view, we're going to actually need to add a local selection as well. So let's just do the tabs.first here as well. And so what we're going to do is this selection, the, the regular selection, gets updated with the switch to tab. And we're going to update that without any animation. But when that gets updated, we then want to also update our local selection with animation. So on this screen, we're going to add a dot on change of. So when the selection changes, and the selection is again happening without animation, we're then going to do with animation. Let's do dot ease in out open brackets, we'll set the local selection equal to the new value. So we're updating the local selection with animation and the selection without. And now we just want our actual tab bar to reference the local selection. So everywhere that the selection is, let's go back down to our tab view here. We have our selection, let's change it to local selection as well as the background. And for the tab view two, let's change it to local selection and if local selection. And we have one more error in our custom tab bar container view where we need to initialize this with the current selection. So let's just add in a uh, selection. And I will build and run this to the simulator one final time. And now we should animate the tab bar so we can see the match geometry effect on the bottom. But when we actually click through these screens, they're just jumping from screen to screen and those screens don't have animation. All right, guys, so this was a long video. This was a lot of code and a lot of talking, but the at the end of this video now, we've created a custom tab bar. And we can see our actual app tab bar view, the actual code in our tab bar view looks very similar to the actual tab view that Apple gives us. So you have the tab view with selection and it comes with a container. And in that container, you can put all of your screens as well as your tab items. And in our version, we have that container, that tab view, we have a selection and in there, we put all of our screens. And then we use this preference key to actually update all of the tab bars. And this is awesome because we can always just add more tabs to our tab bar as well. So if I jump to the tab bar item, let's do another one. Maybe call this, maybe we call this messages. And we can add in here case, case dot messages. We'll return message. And do title case, case dot messages, return messages. Down here we'll do case dot messages, return, uh, let's do color dot orange. And now if I jump back to our app tab bar view and I want to make another screen, I can add in a color. Let's do the orange and we'll add a tab bar item with messages and this will be the money sign tab selection. So it was that easy to then add a tab to our custom tab bar. We can see it down here. We get the animation. We get all of our colors and custom match geometry effect coming in. And of course, we can customize this. So if we wanted to change up the order, we can always do that as well because we're using that tab bar preference key to set the actual tab bar items. So this is looking awesome. Right now, we have the profile now coming in first. So overall, in this video, we did a lot of recap because we learned because we used generics to create the actual uh, custom tab bar container with generic content. We used a view builder because in that container view, we needed to create a view builder to actually add in all of our content. And when we call the custom tab bar container view, we open that brackets here, and this is actually our view builder. 
and we're building that view with all of our screens and all of our tab bar items. Our tab bar items are then being set uh, in our tab bar items preference key file where we have we built a custom preference key that holds all of our tab bar items, an array of tab bar items. And we're using that preference key. So instead of directly calling the preference key every time, we built in a custom view modifier. And that view modifier is handling uh, that tab's opacity, so whether or not we see that tab, as well as the preference that that tab is associated with. And then we created a custom view extension to just very easily add all of that to our view. We then wrapped up the video by customizing the actual animation between the tabs, right? So we had we added a match geometry effect to get this really cool animation between tabs. So we looked at two different ways that we can build out that tab bar. The first one, the tab bar was all the way down to the bottom of the screen. The second one, the tab bar is kind of hovering on top of the screen. And from here, I think you guys now have the ability to actually go out and customize and build your own tab bars. Again, I want to iterate one more time that this is not the only way to build custom tab bars. There are many ways and there are many tutorials online. However, this is the best way that I have seen to date. So I definitely like this. It seems very easy to use. Like this code is very easy to use in your apps once you have it set up. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys can now create custom tab bars in your apps if you need to. These custom tab bars definitely will give your app a professional and uh, unique feel. So, so I would definitely recommend trying to customize the tab bar in your app if you can. I think these custom tab bars look much better than the default tab view as well. This was a long video, so thank you for staying with me, but hopefully it was helpful. As always, I am Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.